So that was the Zanga Arieja by Santiago de Murcia and originally for Baroque guitar. So today we're going to be talking about feeling the dance pulse of this piece and as well as arranging Baroque guitar music and some of the complications that occur um, when you do that. Um, I do have a sheet music edition, there's a link for that in the description, but let's just dive in and start talking about the piece. So the title, um, sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, but Zang. <laughs> Zangori Eha. Uh, there's not much known about this. It, it could, uh, it's it most likely a song of the time period. And there's some theater references to it and this, and this piece. Um, but no one really knows much about the actual song itself. A very literal translation would be a woman of some kind of character. Um, a modern translation would be like a trollop or some kind of um, horrible term like that. But um, I'm not sure if that's really the Baroque um, term for it, so hard to say. Uh, very, so I don't think you have to take it into account very, very much. But the important thing about this piece is feeling the rhythm. It's very dancey. And at the same time, there's, there's a lot of, of accents and syncopation happening in this piece, despite having a, a pretty uniform dance feeling. So. The first thing you probably want to do is just play the melody on its own. And, and go through and just get to know that, that melody. In terms of the rhythm, in 6-4 time, you're just counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But you really, you, I don't think you want to micromanage it by counting all those 6 beats. You just want to feel 2 beats per bar. One, two, thump, thump. So you can see, even when you're feeling that, that rhythm like that, some of what your hands are doing, you know, it's thump and then the notes occur afterwards. So it's it's a lot of feeling the beat internally and feeling that dance internally and then playing uh, what's written in the music. So it's in some ways this piece is quite easy because from a technical standpoint it's like grade three but in terms of feeling that pulse while playing the music it's it's a lot more challenging in that regard and when you see an early music specialist do it on broke guitar or something like that um, it, it's just, it can be really advanced musically, despite being fairly simplistic, uh, technically speaking. But that's your goal. So, you know, feel the dance, pulse, and, and play the music where, and let the accents um, fall where they, where they do in the piece. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit about uh, arranging this piece, because originally it's on a five-chorus Baroque guitar, probably in French tuning. Um, and in, in that tuning, you know, the lower two strings um, might be tuned in octaves, which creates a bit of a problem because in the tablature it might just say like, oh, fourth string, open. But each chorus on a broke guitar has two strings and they can be tuned an octave apart. So when you, when you play just one st string, you hear both octaves. And that can create a problem when you arrange it for the modern classical guitar because you have to choose, do I play this octave or this octave or do I play both? It's a little unrealistic in this piece to play, to 
play both of the notes because it just becomes a complication in, in terms of fingering, right? It's just not how the music was conceived to be played. So what I've done in this particular case is I've taken the lower voice and generally lowered it down an octave. And there's only one or two places where that uh, creates a bit of an issue. So in bar five, for example, at the end of bar five, the original music essentially fingers the music like this with the fourth finger there and the third finger there. But this D would have both octaves so you might have heard this upper note, and it's nice to hear that upper note. Um, but the original bass note is, is D, but because we've lowered down the other voices to, to G here, for example, it makes sense to, to, to lower that F sharp down to the sixth string, but then you don't get your low D. So that's just a sacrifice. You could change it and just play D and D, then you don't get the F sharp. You could play all three notes. That's what I was originally going to do, but it doesn't really call for a three, three voice chord there. So I decided because I lowered the other notes, you might as well lower that F sharp, ditch the D because it's already present in the chord in the upper voice. And then that F sharp nicely resolves to the G in the next line. If you put it up here, you're, you're not going to really, like, kind of resolve it nicely. So this, this voicing seems to work the best. It's what other editors have done with the piece as well. And um, I have to agree with it because uh, I just don't see a way of, of really getting around it without causing cumbersome um, chord shapes or three voice chords where it should only be two. You don't need to actually know any of this. Um, it's just like a curiosity of arranging Baroque guitar music. It kind of makes me want to rip my hair out sometimes because I, it's hard to make a decision. But I think in this particular piece, it just works compositionally quite well to, to do it like this. So you can explore much more of that uh, by looking at the original um, Baroque tablature. It's an Italian tablature, so it'll look upside down to you modern tabbers, but nevertheless, you can, you can explore it like that. So let's just do a walk through the piece now and, and talk a little bit about the guitar playing, but that's some of the context uh, for the work. So I wouldn't try to micromanage this rhythm by going like, you know, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. It's, it's a little bit um, too choppy that way. You really just want to feel the dance rhythm and then react to the rhythms. Thump, thump. And always underplay that second bass note. ready for the next bit. From the trill, four, three, two, three. That VIB is it's vibrato, but the way they thought of vibrato in that in, in this music as it's more like an ornament. It would have been an intense vibrato that almost sounds probably like a, a modulation of the pitch, so almost like a trill. But it doesn't, it doesn't quite come off like that on the modern instrument. Maybe the lower tension and the choruses, the double strings, uh, make it sound a little different on the pro guitar. On the modern instrument, it doesn't really come off as an ornament. It's just like, oh, he's added some strange <laughs> vibrato randomly. So uh, you can either just leave that out or, or you can experiment with that a little bit. Uh, going on from bar 20, I used 2-4 here. It's a little awkward going from 19, bar 19. <laughs> You have to get that second finger up here a little early because you need four, three, and 
then just slide the two down. So from bar 19, last two bars are the same thing it's originally this instead of this but again it just it works so much better to hear that F sharp resolve to the G and because everything's lower it would be so much octave jumping that uh, I think this is the best solution for the piece so great little piece very dancey and melodic from a technical standpoint, fairly easy, grade three or four. From a musical standpoint, you can put a lot of extra um, extra character into it. And in, in that way, the piece can be as advanced as you want it to be. And that's kind of the joy of a lot of early music stuff is that from a technical standpoint, it's not insane to play, but the getting the right musical feel is something that you can really work on.